Hi friends, Jen here with Serenity Hill Farmstead. It is December something. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. It is December. It is early December. It is very cold. I probably should have my jacket on. But there are still things that we can harvest here on the farm. And I am not going to do it today because I am not dressed appropriately. I do not have my work gloves or any of my tools early. <laughs> I think I came very unprepared today. But I can show you what there is so that if you want to go forage around and get a hold of some of these really, really beneficial herbs, you can do it. So let's get started. The very first herb we're going to talk about is burdock. Now I had cut this down so we didn't have so many burrs that were going to be going all over the place because I did not plant this burdock. This was a wild burdock and I wanted to let it go so that it, uh, it could bless us with its roots, but I didn't want it to take over these herb beds because these are the herb beds. And burdock seeds, uh, they, these are the seeds, <laughs> these in the burrs, there's these seeds inside these pods and it's very easy for them to spread. So what I'm actually going to do before I harvest this is I'm going to very carefully take these pods off and put them in a bag and I can use those to purposefully plant them where I want them to be. And then I'm going to dig up these roots. If you saw my marshmallow root harvest video, which I will pop that down in the description box for you to check out if you didn't, that is the exact same process that I'm gonna to follow to harvest these burdock roots. When I harvest this plant, then I'm gonna go through a full walkthrough about burdock root and talk about all of the things that it has to offer because there's so much to talk about with this plant, but it is really, really high in antioxidants. Specifically, let's see if I can say this without getting in YouTube trouble. <laughs> Quercetin is full. It's it's loaded with quercetin in here and a lot of other really good antioxidants. It is anti-inflammatory. It's a diuretic. It is just, it's got so many amazing properties and this is super helpful with many, many different ailments and things that you want um, to support the body with. It's just a great, great herb to have. It is definitely one that I always want to keep on hand and it is really full of inulin, which is a fabulous digestive aid. So, Burdock root, definitely one. If you see it hanging out on your property this time of year, you can definitely harvest the roots. Now, as we're walking over to the next one, hopefully I don't like roll an ankle or something. <laughs> uh, I wanna talk about when to harvest roots. So obviously it's really cold outside right now. It's December, we've had some good freezes, lots of frosts, and this is the time that we want to harvest these plants. So if you go and harvest plants, for the roots, when everything is still green, then all of those good properties are in the leaves. They're in the aerial parts. You want to wait until this time of year where you've had some good freezes and frosts and then go after the roots because by that point in time, everything is dormant and all of the properties are in the roots. So now is the time to do it. And just for reference, we are in zone five. Um, with the new USDA chart. I don't know, 5A, 5B. We used to be in 5A. I think we're cusp of 5B now. I have no idea, but it's zone five. Okay, the next plant is Queen Anne's Lace. And Queen Anne's Lace, this one can be a little bit tricky. You have to be very careful when um, getting involved with Queen Anne's Lace because it has a very deadly lookalike called Poison Hemlock. And the way that you can tell, now the leaf striation, I can't tell you now. Obviously, I can't show you because there's no leaves, <laughs> but on the stem, which also you can't see this time of year because everything's brown, when everything is green, that's when you want to mark, if you're going to come after this when it's dormant for its roots, uh, you want to mark everything when everything is green so that you are very clear on what you are going to be harvesting because um, poison hemlock, all parts, very, very dangerous. So on poison hemlock, the stem has these purple streaks going up and down it. When it's a smaller uh, plant, you can see them more clearly. When they're bigger, it's kind of harder to see because they're more spread out. So you just need to be very, very clear on what plant you are harvesting. But Queen Anne's Lace, this is a fabulous little plant that you can use many different parts of it for. You can use the flowers, you can wait, and you can harvest the seed, um, which this, there's still some seeds in here. The seeds get... Can you see that kind of like, there's the seed and then it's kind of fluffy around the seed. <laughs> but you can harvest the seed and it's a great digestive aid, this plant. And the root, no different. It's a great digestive aid. A lot of the roots that you harvest, in fact, all of the plants that I'm going to share about today are really good for the gut. Um, everything that we actually grow for the root, with the exception of mullein, 
is a fabulous gut herb. So let's go over to Mullen and talk about that one since we're right here by it. So here is our Mullen plant and I have harvested, oh, not all the seeds. This one, I don't think I messed with this one, but a very good chunk of the seed and everything in here is seeded. I've got a 50 foot row full of hopefully what will be a very vigorous Mullen crop this year. But Mullen has so many different purposes and I'm gonna put all the videos down below. I've got three different videos on Mullen that talk about the three different parts of it. And this time of year, here is the remnants of a first plant. You may still find very green leaves, but these plants here, these stalks, these second years, these are dormant. They are very dormant. The first years, you're still gonna see them popping up because really Mullen, um, first year Mullen will pop up any time of a growing season and it really stretches the growing season it, it pops up pretty early and it stays really late and because it's so thick and soft and velvety and it's just a really dense leaf i think that is part of why these leaves it's just totally my theory but i think that is why um, they last so long into the uh, colder months now if we had solid freezes and heavy snow and super, super cold temperatures, this is not gonna look like this. They're gonna be, you know, more like, here's a mushy one. They get kind of mushy and, and gross. <laughs> they don't turn crunchy like, you know, other leaves do. They get kind of mushy and gross as they start to disintegrate. It's pretty much what they do. But, and then here's another stage of the leaf. Like they just start getting brown around the edges. And we've had a couple inches of snow already and you still have leaves that look like this. So it's a very resilient uh, plant. It likes, it likes to hang on to life. <laughs> but in the second year plant, after you've had this stalk, that is when we will harvest because mullen is a biennial plant, meaning it will uh, take two years for it to go through its full life cycle. And after this part, after the second year and the stalk goes up, it's not gonna come back again. So that's when we wanna go after that root. So every plant here that has stalked, we are going to dig up these roots. Then those roots are really good, very specifically for lower inflammatory back pain. So for mullen root, we will use that in a tincture and then we've got something that we can use as a tonic for low inflammatory back pain. Really, really good for me, my favorite. <laughs> now this next one that I'm about to go over with you, I admittedly have no experience with because as I was doing research on some other plants, I came across this one and I went, you've gotta be kidding me. And I find it so amazing and interesting how God will put exactly what we need, exactly where we need it at the exact right time that we need it. And it never ceases to amaze me the more tuned in I get to this, this land and this farm and the more I pray about the things that we want and need for this place, the more I see the things that we need specifically in our lives to help us get to that. And this plant, I've always hated, hated, like with a deep fiery passion, hated this plant, but turns out it's pretty amazing. Okay, I'm gonna very carefully get this plant because it likes to try and hurt you. <laughs> Ouch, you really should have my gloves. Okay, here's just a little piece of it, but this is bull thistle. Do you see, this is like a baby piece of a bull <laughs> thistle. These spikes get long and they are intense and they are super sharp. And if you come across one of these, wearing um, sandals or shorts, you will regret your life choices that day, my friend. <laughs> it's not fun. I have gotten these deep into my hands and there is nothing harder, I am convinced, to remove than a bull thistle splinter. It is awful. They're so bad. And I hate these because thistle, they spread like it, nothing else. I mean, like they just, I have nothing to compare it to. <laughs> they spread so so easily because they spread by air you know you've got like that milk like thistle okay when thistle flowers it looks like looks like thistle like milk thistle or anything else there's slight differences in some thistle variations uh but they all pretty much have the same kind of characteristics and qualities and how they're going to flower and spread they spread with the wind so if your thistle flowers you are going to have thistle for at least the next seven years that you're going to be contending with and bull thistle i'm used to canadian thistle on our you know, backyard homestead, 
and we didn't have any Canadian thistle out here at first, but it started creeping in during the, with the one section that we had to till, Canadian thistle came up and it was, it was a shame. And ironically enough, we had to till that area because we were trying to get rid of bull thistle. It was not smart, but bull thistle, you cover it, it still comes back. Like all of the things that we were trying, the tilling was a last resort and all we did was create more Canadian thistle. Totally side, total side note there. Okay, bull thistle root. I just found out that bull thistle root is excellent for anti-inflammatory properties, specifically those with spondyloarthropathies. So spondyloarthropathy is ankylosing spondylitis. It is if you have inflammatory arthritis in your back. Spondylo is spine, arthritis, or arthritis. So if you have spondyloarthropathy, this is what you want, this root, bull thistle root. Now, I have zero experience in harvesting bull thistle root. I have plenty of experience in killing bull thistle. <laughs> it's not easy. But these plants get super tall. We had one and I let it go because I wanted to see how big it was before it started to flower. This thing, no joke, was like four, four and a half feet tall. This sucker was huge. And the stalk was like this big. It was enormous. I wish I had pictures of it. Maybe I do. I'll have to, if I can find a picture of it, I'll pop it up here. It's going to be hard though. I don't know if I do have one, but that sucker was very hard to kill. Um, we like chopped down with a machete on either sides of the stalk and then chopped at it and eventually got it way down there and mowed it and smothered it. And I know exactly where it's at right now. It is underneath where the greenhouse is going to go. <laughs> It's underneath there. So I can't even go after that root because I am not uncovering that. But we have plenty of it in other places on the farm. Whoop, there goes the tripod. I am going to harvest this this year and I'm going to play with it over the winter and see how it helps me with my AS and um, report back, I guess. We will, this will be the great bull thistle story to see how effective this really is. Just for the sake of being thorough, here is a really good picture of what these look like in their first year, much like mullen. They grow in rosette, second year they come up. I don't know if these are biennial. I'm gonna guess they're not, but um, I don't know. But do you see how big those thorns get? Look at, there's my finger for reference. Look at that. Ugh. It's a love-hate relationship for sure. Okay, friends, you're going to have to excuse my huffing and puffing. This cold weather, my asthma does not love. So, all right. Oh, look, another bull thistle right around where we're going to talk. The last herb that I have for you today, we are just going to go ahead. You know what? Let me just put you down. The last herb, this is kind of weird, a weird angle, that I have for you today is one that you're all familiar with and is really easy to find. That's dandelion. Dandelion root is probably the most common herb to use for helping the gut. It is helpful to the gut lining. It's helpful in supporting all of the function within the digestive tract. It helps protect your liver and your gallbladder and your pancreas. It is a wonderful herb to have on hand. All parts of the dandelion leaf are edible. They're all usable. This one was sitting like deep in the mud, so I'm not going to eat this leaf, but um, dandelion greens. I think they're tastiest in early spring because it's one of the first herbs to pop up. And, um, it's really good. Just, I like to have it like as mixed greens and salad and things. I like that. If you let them get too long or too old, like this one probably wouldn't taste very delicious. Then it gets bitter and it's not the tastiest thing in the world, but they're still very good for you. They're chock full of lots of different nutritive property, lots of different vitamins and minerals, and they're just really, really good for you. So no difference in the root there. The root is really, really good hepatoprotectant. It's gonna protect that liver, that gallbladder, and that pancreatic function. So everything can work really well together and function the way it should. Now, I think, did I say that that was gonna be the last herb? I actually have one more, but I don't have any examples of it because I didn't plant a crop of it this year because it grows wild and honestly I had plenty and I didn't need to grow any this year, but that's chicory. So chicory root is a wild herb 
Um, you definitely need to mark the area where you're going to harvest it. It's found in roadways and ditches. And I always suggest never harvesting from roadways and ditches because you have runoff, pesticide, herbicide, sprays and things. And it's just not a healthy, you know, example of something that you want to put into your body. The chicory itself has a lot of good gut properties, just like virtually every other herb we've talked about today. And it's really good roasted as a coffee substitute. In February, when um, my family got COVID, I ended up on the other end of that not being able to drink coffee. All of a sudden, coffee was something that was triggering palpitations. It was giving me really bad headaches. It was really affecting my asthma in a really bad way. Of course, I was coming off healing from COVID, so that's part of it. And then about a month and a half, well, you know, probably about a month and a half ago, I tried coffee again thinking, you know, we've healed from it. We're good. We're okay. Um, just, just a little bit of leftover breathing issues that we're having and, of course, some wonderful hair loss. But other than that, we're okay. We're moving on with life. Let's try some coffee again. Bad idea. It was a horrible idea bad life decision. <laughs> so we're sticking with chicory. I have no issues with chicory. It tastes really good. I put all of like the fixins that I put in my coffee, I will put in my chicory. So I put heavy whipping cream and a little bit of stevia in there. And it's a very acceptable coffee substitute. I do like roasted dandelion root tea, which I did make a video for. I'm all dirty now. <laughs> I did make a video for that. If you want to check that out, I'll stick that down there too. Uh, but the chicory root, by far better than the dandelion root. I think um, it's just got, it's just got a better flavor and it's not as bitter as a dandelion root can be. So I will always choose the chicory root over the dandelion root. But um, chicory root we haven't really grown tons of. I've grown some little bits here and there and just kind of mixed it in with the things that I've bought. There is a coffee, like a, well, it's not coffee. It's a, it's a coffee tea, as my kids call it. Uh, there is one that I actually get at our health food store, but you can get it on Amazon and I will put a link down in the description box below. It's called Ticino, I think is the way you pronounce it. And I like the hazelnut one. It's really good. It's really good. And it does also have some of those properties that help energize you and get you moving in your day. So there are what was supposed to be five herbs. What did we talk about today? Burdock, Queen Anne's lace, mullein, dandelion, and bull thistle. So those are five different herbs that you can go after for their roots in December. And if you live in a climate that's a little bit warmer and you really don't start getting super cold until like January or February, then you've got some time and you can harvest your roots probably well into that season. You just always want to make sure you check specifically on your area and what experienced gardeners and herbalists or farmers are doing in your area. Here we can harvest now and I will probably end up harvesting into January. Um, or I could, I would like to get everything done now, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. But if the, if the weather stays what it is now, which is very mild for this time of year, then we could keep harvesting um, well into January. So don't think that just because the actual growing season is over, that there's nothing that you can do in your garden and there's no herbs to be taken advantage of because there absolutely are. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because this is not the last of this I'm going to be sharing about. There are things happening in winter and you can still harvest. There are herbs that you can take advantage of and harvest year round. And when we get to those points of the season, I'm going to be sharing about them. So make sure you are subscribed. Your notification bell is on so that you can get notified when we put those videos out. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye.